Hello, this lecture video is going to be a brief introduction into the world of acids and bases. What I'm covering in this lecture is by no means enti the entire history or science involved with acids and bases. This is really just the very beginning of um, learning what an acid and a base is about. So if you were to take another chemistry class, things are definitely going to go more in depth than what we're doing um, today. So. First off, characteristics of acids. Acids are going to taste tart or sour. So think like citrus fruit, as you can see in the picture that's here to the right. Um, acids are also going to turn litmus paper red. And acids characteristically have a low pH. So it's going to be anywhere from a pH of one to below seven. So over here in our picture are just some regular everyday acids that you might come into contact with on a daily basis. So over here, soft drinks made of with carbonic acid. Bottom right, uh, grapes or tartaric acid. Citrus fruits, um, white vinegar, cream of tartar. So um, rhubarb leaves, yogurt has lactic acid in it. So um, typically whenever we talk about acids and bases, everybody automatically assumes that acids are very dangerous and that's true when we're in a lab. We have to make sure that we're practicing proper lab safety and assuming that everything is dangerous because typically acids, when we're in a lab, they are clear and colorless. Uh, but you do come into contact with acidic things on a regular basis. There will be other slides later in this lecture that show you that as well. So again, acids are sour. They turn litmus paper red, and they have a low pH between 1 and below 7. Okay. Next, characteristics of bases. Bases have a bitter taste. They have a slippery feel. So what that, I mean by that, they feel like soap. If you have them on, soap is a base. Uh, but if you were to, if maybe you're in a lab, you're doing a procedure with an acid and a base, and you got something on your skin, and you go to immediately wash it off following lab safety procedures. If it feels as though you have soap on your hands and it's super slippery, then that means that you've uh, spilled a base on your hands. Um, bases have high pH values, so anything from 7 above to 14, and they're going to turn litmus paper blue. So uh, most of the uh, characteristic of bases, this is just the, a picture I was able to find quickly on the internet. Uh, cleaners, so Drano, baking soda, Tums, if you've ever had an upset stomach, think about this. Um, if you have an upset stomach, then you have a lot of um, stomach acid that's causing you a problem. You take Tums, that's your base, and that's going to cause a neutralization reaction. And so next week, you'll learn about neutralization chemical reactions. All right, so next up. Litmus paper. What is litmus paper? Why do I keep talking about it? So litmus paper is called an indicator. There are lots of different types of indicators in the world. This one is just super simple, uh, but all indicators are going to change color based on pH. So as you can see here in our picture is a piece of litmus paper held by tongs. When it goes into the um, when it goes into the acid, it turns it red. Um, when bases go into, when the litmus paper goes into the base, it turns blue. Okay, so this is really just a very quick qualitative test. So qualitative just means that there's no value associated with it. So it's a quick qualitative test to let us know whether we have an acidic or a basic substance. So there are other indicators. Like I said, litmus paper is probably just the simplest. It's a very quick and easy test. You just dip it right in and it changes color. Um, other indicators that you talk about next week uh, is typically called phen phenolphthalein. So if you look at your at this bottom picture here, it shows you that it's basic, it's pink when it's in basic or an alkaline structure or alkaline substance, but it's clear and colorless when it's in an acidic, um, an acidic substance. So indicators in general change color based on pH. Acids turn litmus paper red. Bases turn litmus paper blue. Okay. Uh, next up, 
definitions of acids and bases. So there's a couple different theories associated with acids and bases. Arrhenius is going to be the one that we spend the most time thinking about. So Arrhenius says that acids dissociate to make hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions. So common acids are going to be HCl. When that breaks apart, we're going to have hydrogen and chlorine. Okay, we're going to have hydrobromic acid. When it breaks apart, we have hydrogen and we have bromine. Okay, so anytime, sorry about that, anytime hydrogen ions are dissociated, uh, then that means the substance is acidic. So bases dissociate to make hydroxide ions. So this is hydroxide. Notice how similarly spelled hydrogen and hydroxide are. You have to read carefully if this were to be a question. Okay, so bases dissociate to make OH minus. So if I have NaOH, sodium hydroxide, sodium and hydroxide. Okay, if I have calcium hydroxide, it's going to dissociate into calcium and two hydroxide ions. Okay, so acids for our purpose of our class, acids are going to have H plus bases, bases are going to dissociate into OH minus. Okay, uh, so. This is an example for if you were to take another chemistry class. You take another chemistry class, you hear about Bronsted Lowry, about how, pro, how acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptors. So, but the purpose for our class, you don't have to know this. I want you to focus on the fact that acids dissociate to make hydrogen and bases dissociate to make hydroxide. So, we can use these ions, hydrogen and hydroxide, in some math formulas. So, let's look. <clears throat> pH, what is it? pH actually stands for the power of hydrogen. It is measuring the concentration of hydrogen ions. So you learned a little bit about the word concentration when we learned about solutions. Now, pH measures the concentration of hydrogen ions. A pH value is going to tell if you have an acid or a base. So just like I said, acids are going to be anywhere from 1 to 7. 1 to like, I'll write 6.99. 7, we're going to be neutral. And anything from 7.111 and up to 14 is going to be a base. So if you look at this pH, pH strips that are here, this is showing you this is another type of indicator paper, not necessarily exactly litmus paper, but it's showing you what colors to expect. So if you were to take this paper and dip it into the substances, you can compare the color and it'll tell you what pH you have. So battery acids, typically around a pH of 0. Stomach acid, a pH of 2. Apple juice, pH of 3. Black coffee, pH of 5. So here is black coffee is going to be slightly acidic, whereas battery acid is going to be very acidic. Okay, so the lower the pH, the more acidic your substance is going to be. The higher the pH, the higher um, your alkalinity is going to be. So, pure water has a pH of 7, all right? Um, so, the closer to 7 your substance is, the better the, it's okay for us to ingest. So, antacids have a pH of 8 if you were to dissolve them, baking soda, pH of 9, hand soap, a pH of 10, household ammonia, pH of 12, and drain cleaner like Drano is a pH of 14. I think my next slide, I just have another pH scale. So um, this picture again, just showing acids and bases in our pH scale. So pH is what tells us whether or not we have an acid or a base. So lemons have a pH of 2, grapes pH of 3, tomatoes pH of 4, bananas pH of 5, um, milk pH of 6, eggs are basic pH of 8, soap pH of 10, ammonia, bleach, oven cleaner. Uh, so I like these kind of pictures just to show you that you're coming into contact with acids and bases on a regular basis. Okay, so P, 
pH scale tells us whether or not we have an acid or a base. Acids are below 7. Bases are above 7. So pOH is going to measure the concentration of hydroxide ions. So that's OH negative. So you might be given a hydroxide ion concentration. And if that's the case, we can kind of work backwards. We have this relationship here. pH plus pOH equals 14. If you are given a pOH, you can calculate the pH. Only the pH value is going to tell you if we have an acid or a base. So let's look at an example. Example. All right, so I'm looking at this first example problem here. Number one, if a substance has a pOH value of 8.5, is it an acid or a base? This problem is being tricky. We cannot tell if something is an acid or a base using the pOH value. This is not going to help us. We have to find the pH value. So pH plus pOH equals 14. So, if I know that my pOH value is 8.5, all we have to do is subtract. So, 14 minus 8.5 is going to give us a pH value of 5.5. Okay? So, the only way you can tell if something's an acid or a base is from the pH. So a pH of 5.5 is going to make this an acid. Okay, next one. If a substance has a pH value of 8.5, is it an acid or base? And calculate the pOH. All right, so this time we're given the pH value. So that means that we can know right off the, off the bat that this is a base. The value is above 7, so that makes it a base. But to calculate the pOH, all we're going to do is take 14, subtract 8.5, and we're going to have 14 minus 8.5 is giving us a pOH value of 5.5. pOH equals 5.5. Now, obviously, I just used the same two values uh, to work this problem, but it won't... Um, you won't always be using the same value. So what I want you to see is you have to know pH to tell if acid or base. All right, let's look at another one. So if your pH value were to ever be 7, it's just neutral. It's neither an acid nor a base. But anything else within that range is going to be able to tell us acidity or alkalinity. So if the pH of a solution is 4, what is the pOH? So it tells me pH is 4, so I'm going to take 14 minus 4, and that gives me 10. Okay. Now, if this question were to say acid or base, and we're looking at two values. Remember, the pH value is the one that tells us whether or not we have an acid or a base, not the pOH. So pH of 4, that would make this acidic. All right, next. According to the pH scale, which substance is slightly acidic? So we're looking at something with a pH that's less than 7. Okay, but not close to 1. So down here at battery acid, these are going to be the strong acids. So F, that's out. Okay, if you look at black coffee, that's here in the middle. Baking soda is here at 9. And drain cleaner is at 14. So 9 and 14, they are both bases. Okay, so our answer is going to be G, or yeah, G black coffee because that's a pH of 5. So that's all I have for you in this lecture. Just a quick summary. We talked about characteristics.
of acids and bases. We talked about definitions of what's making it an acid or base. So acids have H plus ions, bases have OH minus ions. Uh, we talked about the we talked about litmus paper and indicators. We talked about uh, the pH scale, how you see you're with acids and bases in daily life. And then the last thing we talked about was the relationship between pH and pOH being 14. So if you're given pOH, you can solve for pH and vice versa. All right, thank you for watching.